Good morning, everyone. We are so excited that you're joining us for Sunday worship. Uh, we are all very excited here. I hope you're excited online. I'm just gonna ask you if you're watching us online, uh, if you're watching us on Facebook, go ahead and share, share, share. You're just gonna click the share button and it shares it. Invite people to come and watch, tag their names on the comment box. That way we can get this video out to as many people as we can. We're super excited. We are again still being safe here at Mesa Place Church by doing all the things that we need to be doing. Um, and, and don't worry about it. Your safety is our number one priority. Uh, but we still want to get together and worship God and just have that time with Him. I would just ask whatever you're doing at home, here at church, that you would just put everything aside. Let's give God our undivided attention because He is worthy and He is deserving of our praise. Amen? All right, let's get started. together. Every 
Turning lives around 
I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. Never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. And even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working.
will not wait until it does for here and now shall your kingdom that's watching online, Lord. And I pray, God, that we would have an awakening, God, that we would realize it's not about us, Father, that you would help us in building our character to be more like you and less like ourselves, Father. Lord, I pray that whatever judgments we want to put on others, on other churches, on other people, on everything that's happening right now in our world, Father, that we would just lay that down before you, God, we, that we would be the light that you are calling us to be, Father, and I especially pray that we wouldn't engage if it's not going to be uplifting and encouraging to others. Help us to be more like you, Jesus. Help us to be the light in the darkness that is, seems to be so overwhelming today. Father, I pray a special prayer for our law enforcement, God. I pray protection over them, Lord. I pray that your angels would be with them, Father. You say that you go before us, Lord, so go before them, God. Lord, I pray for the injustices in our world, God. You see them and you know them. Father, I pray for, for all these people here, for all the people online, God. May we be more like you, God. Can we just start there? Father, work on our character and our character flaws, Lord, to be more like you. I thank you for this church, for Pastor Christian. I pray that you would speak through him, God, and I pray that you would bless us and protect us in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Hey, idiot, the back of the line is back.
hard to swim with that. Amen, amen. Today we're going to talk about character. And before we get started, I just want to welcome you all uh, online. And those of you that are online, if you want to go ahead and go to mesaplacechurch.com. Those of you that are online, go to mesaplacechurch.com. And you can download today's sermon by going to the More button, M-O-R-E. Go to the More button. You're going to see there that today's sermon is there for you to download. Also today, we're going to be observing communion. So at home, please get your juice, your crackers, your bread uh, ready, your water. And for those of you here, I'm going to be giving some instructions. As you can tell, the communion table is set. And as we get started, oh, and if anybody needs a bulletin, go ahead and raise your hands here locally, and uh, we'll get one to you. If you don't have a bulletin at home, go to mesaplacechurch.com. We're not going to take you one. Anyway, that was a joke, and nobody laughed. Nobody laughed in here. That's okay. And as we get started, we want to honor the Lord, so let me go ahead and just take off my hat. We want to welcome you all to Mesa Place, and I'm so glad that you've joined us for worship online and for those of you that are here. And uh, for those of you that are here, uh, Brother David Gonzalez brought us some Bibles, some Good News translations, uh, and they've got some study notes right there. We have a whole case. Uh, Robert Wrinkle, our head deacon, has them, so on the way out... Uh, We're going to exit at the uh, back of the building. You can get one of these from Robert. Awesome, awesome Bibles. You just have to have really, really good eyes or good glasses. I want to thank Ben also for bringing the message these last two Sundays. Amen. You can give him a hand. He did a good job. Now, I didn't go anywhere. I was working here, but with Ben preaching, it gave me time to work on some things that I needed to, uh, both personally and here at MPC. So Ben, I want to thank you. I'm so very proud of all the hard work that you did. So once again, Mijo, thank you so much. And I also want to thank Ben and his team. Uh, They went out yesterday morning, uh, the Neos team, and they had their Neos garage sale. And so they did an amazing job. They went and they cooked themselves there in the hot, hot sun. You all aren't clapping because you weren't in the sun. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but they raised over uh, $820, and so we praise God for that. So that's going to go for upcoming events and hopefully some of the camps that are uh, going to come back soon. So please stay on our social media sites and mesaplacechurch.com uh, so that you can know what, uh, when and where they're going to use that money. And then also, um, for those of you online and for those of you here, Ben David Ramirez has been here for one year. Why are you all clapping? You should be clapping for me. No, I'm just kidding. No, we're so proud of him. And so we need to come together and see what we're going to do next in his life and in Hannah's life. Uh, we, we want to make sure to bless and protect them. I also want to thank those of you that logged on to Friday's MPC Talk, uh, our live event that we had on Facebook. If you didn't get a chance, you can go back to our Facebook and see it for yourselves. Uh, we went over the financial condition of the church there. Uh, what's pending, the plans, but we also introduced two more people on our team. We introduced uh, Jessica Munoz. She's going to be helping us a little bit more. So, uh, yes, amen. We want to thank Jess for all her hard work. And we also introduced Carlos. He's right here next to me. Hey. (laughs) And so he's going to be our resident uh, interpreter from now on. And so we praise God for the work that he's doing as we connect to another part of our community. So thank you, Carlos. Thank you so very much. And then I'm going to say happy birthday. You all clap to you. That's a little tradition we have here at Mesa Place Church. So even at home, I'm going to say happy birthday. Ready? Happy birthday to Miss Denise. Yes. All right. She turned 28 again for the fifth year or something like that. So praise God. Praise God. And then my wife and I, we celebrated our 26th wedding anniversary this week, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It only feels like 25 years. It only feels like 25 years, so praise God for that. All right, well, let's get started. Today, we're going to continue in our series, 
through the book of Esther. Now, just a show of hands, how many of you, I want to see you all, have read through the book of Esther? It's a little weak, guys. Those of you online, if you've already read it, throw me a thumbs up, either online or here to my phone. You see, the book of Esther, as we've seen through this series, has many things to offer us, many things that are also a bit unusual as it comes to a book of the Bible. As a for instance, the book of Esther is one of only two books in the entire Bible that never mentions the name of God. It's one of only two. And of course, the main character of the book of Esther, in case you didn't know it, she's a woman. <laughs> that might be a contradiction to some of the churches sometimes. The book of Esther is being taught by a woman. And this is why, for the most part, this series we've been in has been directed in and for the women, for the women. Now, men, don't you think that we're leaving you out? There are things that all of us can learn during this series as well. But men, I'll be doing a series for us a bit later. But as any good gentleman, ladies first, <laughs> ladies first. And so in this series, we've covered the introduction of the book of Esther. Who are the characters in the book of Esther? We've seen that as believers, no matter how big or small we are, or we think we are, we all have a purpose for such a time as this. We've seen pride and how pride, even for Christians, for the most part, we've tried to stay away from pride, but how Esther had pride and how that helped her and how the Apostle Paul tells us in Galatians chapter 6, verse 4, Galatians chapter 6, verse 4, it tells us to have pride in the work, in the service that we do, because ministry can be so hard. If we don't take pride in the work that we do, man, you're going to burn out. You're going to burn out. The word that Paul uses here in Galatians chapter 6, verse 4, is the Greek word kautema. It literally means boast, to be boasting. <laughs> We must boast in ourselves, not to others, in ourselves, and go, ah, oh, look at what the Lord has been doing through me. Unbelievable. That's what the Apostle Paul was telling us to do. In this series, we've seen influence and how we can hurt our influence for the Lord and how Esther used her influence. And like also the Apostle Paul devotes an entire chapter, Romans chapter 14, I I want to challenge you, go back and read Romans chapter 14. He dedicates the whole chapter to one point. You don't have to be right all the time. Did you know that? Although you might have the truth of the gospel, if you're going to start arguing with somebody about what the Greek terminology is, it doesn't do you any favors if you're going to start arguing with people. Romans chapter 14. You don't have to be right all the time. And the last thing that we've seen before we took that break was being teachable. How Esther demonstrates to us how she remained teachable. Most of us think that we're only teachable when we're young. And so if you're, if you're 45 years old, I still consider you to be young. Is that an amen? amen. <laughs> Today, we're going to look at character. Character. I've heard it said... It is who you are when no one is looking. Character, the definition is this. It is the mental or moral quality distinctive to your individuality. It is your mental and moral quality that is distinctive to you. And so like that video that we just saw this morning, what's the real you? That is your character. And as a sermon on character goes, we can go all sorts of ways on this topic of character. But what I want us to see that Esther, who she was at the start of the book of Esther, had a transformation of character. You see this right away. And that is because she went from being weak in character to having good character. That is what's so striking about that book. That is what we're going to be looking at today, so I want you to strap in, so everybody strap in. Go ahead and strap in. There you go. And so the very first thing 
to understand, we see in the life of Esther, right there in your outline, it'll be here on the screens as well, is first, good character is godly character. In order to understand what what good character is, it is defined for us as Christians as godly character. (laughs) This is what we're going to look at. And, And as you start to read the book of Esther... If you didn't know how to read the Bible before you started reading Esther, okay, stay with me. Say, for instance, you don't know how to read the Bible. Pastor, are you saying there's a way to read the Bible? (laughs) Absolutely. But if you started reading the book of Esther and you didn't know anything about how to read the Bible, there are certain things that you would read in the book of Esther that you think are permissible to believers. Well, it's in the Bible. It must be okay. Okay. Like, as a for instance, that she and Mordecai, they, they seem to live more of a secular life, a life in the world, instead of believing God, because they did things that seemed outside of being godly. <laughs> like Esther, as a for instance, wanting to become part of a harem. What? And so what does it mean then to have good character, to have godly character? Let me take you to some scripture that I heard Chuck Swindoll was using this past week, and I believe it will help you understand some things, maybe even of yourself in your Christian character. Look at 1 John chapter 3, verse 4. Go ahead and get your Bibles out. 1 John chapter 3, verse 4, and then we're going to jump down to verse 6. John says this, Whoever commits... Other translations that I appreciate a bit more say, whoever practices sin also commits, also practices lawlessness, circle lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. Circle that once again. Now jump down to verse 6. Whoever abides in him does not sin. Whoever sins, as seen in verse 4, John tells us, commits, practices lawlessness, Whoever sins has neither seen him nor known him. We saw this during our Bible study this past week. Now, let me unpack this a bit. You see, maybe this is the first time you come to a place like this, a church. Maybe it's the first time you're listening to church online. Or maybe you're a Christian, and so you hear this from John this morning, and you'd be or, or, or might be questioning your salvation right about now. You start to question your Christianity looking through this filter that John gives us. Because John says, whoever commits practices sin. <laughs> well, you see, let me ask a question real quick. All those of you that have not sinned this past week, please raise your hand. All of you online that have not sinned, send me a thumbs up. Send me an emoji. No one. No one can. You see, here's the thing. Those who practice, those who commit, put a little box next to that. You see, in the Greek, it would read those that are frauds, those that are fraudulent. (laughs) You see, before becoming a Christian, before asking Christ to save you and entrust your life to Christ, what you used to do was you used to practice being a fraud. Tell someone next to you, listen up. Thank you. You see, before Christ came into your life, we used to practice sin. We were frauds to the world. Every minute of the day, we practiced lawlessness. And so John is taking us and talking about, in verse 4, of your life and mine before Christ, not after He's making that delineation. Now, why can I say that? Because I want you to look at verse 4. But whoever abides in him, Christ, does not sin, does not practice sin. That's not what we're practicing anymore as Christians. Now, hold on, because some of our resident biblical theologians that think they're theological students, and the only one we have that I know of is Ben Ramirez, you, some of you would want to disagree with me about this verse, and that's okay, but... To set this up, let me ask you a question, audience participation this Sunday morning. Let me ask you a question. You all better get it right. Can Christians still sin? 
Ah, of course. And so when does or when are the chances better for a Christian not to sin? Ah, answer, when you abide. When you abide. Have you ever wondered sometimes when you're about to beat your child to a pulp? And you're like, why did I, why did I lose my temper? Why am I sinning against this child? You weren't abiding. You see, that Greek word that John is using here, abide, is the word meno or menon, M-E-N-O, M-E-N-O-N. It means to stay in, but it also means not to depart. (gasps) I love that. I love that. You see, listen up. You see, God promises never to leave us or forsake us. And like Ben Ben has preached these past two weeks, being a follower of Christ is remembering that God empowers us. We don't. (laughs) <laughs> and for that matter, we can't do much of anything else, but when we abide, when we men know, when we stay in, when we don't depart, God will empower us. That's the difference. And so how to have godly character? To have good character because the only good character is godly character from God. Look at Romans chapter 13, verse 14. But, Paul says, put on the Lord Jesus Christ. There it is. Make no provisions for the flesh to fulfill its lusts. How many of you sometimes, your mouth kind of waters after you have a good fight? It it, it kind of feels good sometimes, like, oh, man, I told him off. That's that lustfulness. You know, in the New Living Translation, it would read, but ask the Lord Jesus Christ to help you live as you should and don't make plans to enjoy evil. (laughs) Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, the only way to have good character is to have godly character, and the only way to have it last in your life is to start to abide in Christ, to put on Christ. You see, as you read Esther, things didn't start out so well for her. Her way of thinking and living were not very godly, but as she went to God, as she started going to God, she worked to stay in God. That is when she was able to have good character. Esther, as a for instance, in chapter 4, verse 15 and 16, you don't have to go there. She says to Morty, her, 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 her stepdad, she says, Hey, Morty, find as many Jews, as many believers as you can and start praying to God for me. Uh, how many of you have ever called somebody to say, Hey, man, I don't know, I'm, I, just, just pray for me right now. In chapter 1 through 4, She did the best that she could. That's what you read from chapter 1 through 4. She did the best that she could. But good character knows where to go, to God. That's godly character. And so she starts asking people to pray for her. You see, godly character is staying in God. You see, character is more than how we talk. It is more than what you are good at because character on our own can only get us so much. It has limitations. Think about it. Your character only can take you to certain limitations. You see, let me break it down, break it down. Somebody tell me to break it down. Oh, I got a little soulful there. Ladies, are you just doing you? Ladies, are you just doing you or are you abiding in Christ? What do you mean, Pastor? Well, how about in your dating? Ladies, in what you're wearing in what you are doing, well, it's okay, I'll pay for it next month. Men, men, I said men, they're all asleep in here, men, there you go, one man, here we go. Are you staying, are you abiding in Christ, or is your character being compromised by being in the world instead of in Christ? Oh boy, I'm preaching now. You see, these points lead to the second point. Second, character is expressed by our choices. Uh Have you ever noticed that? Your character will be expressed by the choices that you make. Or to say it another way, the way you react is the way you think. And oh, that'll preach. The way way you are reacting is the way you are thinking. The way you behave. Oh, Esther, as you start to read the book of Esther, I think it isn't hard to see that the way that she and Uncle Morty expressed themselves was with fear. 
Isn't that right? You start reading the book of Esther, and man, these guys were scared. And as you read and start to see God move in their lives, or specifically in the life of Esther, what you start to see is no longer fear, but a kind of confidence that starts to take place. As a for instance, and you don't have to go there, but Morty, Uncle Mordecai there, in a sort of pep talk to his daughter, Esther, tells her, if you keep silent, if you don't take action, deliverance is going to come from another place for the Jews. <laughs> and as she hears this, she does not respond with fear anymore. She says instead in verse 16, if I die, I die. Character, if I perish, I perish. That's her reaction now. She goes from fear to faith. She goes with, with trying to be good to, man, I need God. And in going to God, she becomes godly. How do I know she did? Just one verse over in verse 15. She says, go, go get the Jews. Go get the believers, Mordecai. Pray for me, and I'm going to fast and pray, and I'm going to have the people around me. She started evangelizing. You see, how many of us, during our reaction times, are we evangelizing people? No, you know what we do? We stress them out too, right? Like this so-and-so doesn't know what they're doing for me. They keep hurting me. They keep doing this, that, and the other. Not Esther. She started evangelizing at that time. She says, I'm going to make these people over here do the same. They're going to fast and pray for me too, Dad. Huh, that's amazing. You see, our belief and faith in God is to be expressed, listen up, listen up, in how we react. Just think about how you react. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was listening to my, my beautiful wife talk to a friend of ours last night, and, and Ben had told her, what do you mean you can't smell? Maybe you have corona, and for the rest of the night she had corona. It's like, honey, don't, don't quarantine yourself. It's still her anniversary. <clears throat> we hadn't had dinner yet. What are you guys thinking? You see, in your Christian walk, everybody say, in my Christian walk, how are you not acting? How are you reacting? You see, here's the thing. I, I think we can all fake it. That's our problem. Can I get an amen on that? I hate it sometimes, right? I, I, I'll know, unfortunately, about events in your, in your lives, and I'll say, hey, how are you doing? Fine, fine, fine. You have a phone coming out of your head because somebody threw it at you. Fine, everything's fine. You're not fine. How are you reacting? You can, you're faking it. And so not how are you acting, but instead notice how are you reacting how are you reacting? Ladies, oh. How are you expressing your belief in the choices that you're making? I said, ladies, all the ladies, get your faces out of your phones. Ladies, how are you expressing yourself? You see, if you say you believe in Jesus, but you ain't expressing that in how you spend your time, Something's up in how you're dating. Moms, oh, come on. Moms, in how you're raising your kids. Are you raising your kids with Jesus Christ and on the left hand with fear? Or you better. Be careful. Come on, that's preaching. Are you expressing fear in how you're raising your kids? Man, come on. This book got for you got some stuff for you too. When, 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 when you go, when, when your wife just comes up to you, she's not doing anything. She just comes up to you and she brings up maybe buying a new home or, or getting a new car or, or something that the kids need. Are you reacting in fear and it lashes out in anger? She's just asking you a question, Holmes. Maybe you ain't a dad. Maybe you single. And when you alone with that little chickadee, are you reacting with your desires? Are you expressing and honoring God's creation when she wit you? <laughs> Men, are you reacting by not parenting? You don't parent because your daddy wasn't there or your daddy wasn't good. 
Or maybe like me, you didn't have a daddy. And so it's like, hey, I'm checking out. Your wife needs help, but it's like, no, man, sorry, I don't have those skills. <clears throat> you see, I'm going to give you a machine gun style verse, uh, a section of verses of how everyone, say me, how me can express godly character and how we can react, how we can get scripture and bind that into our lives. Amen. Look at John chapter 15, verse 5. We're going to go quick, so get ready. John 15, verse 5. Jesus says, I'm the vine, you're the branch. Except Mary many times, we think we're the vine, and Jesus is just kind of like a little twig. And he says, I'm the vine. He who abides, there's that word again, he who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, but without me, you can do nothing. You say, oh, it's because I'm not a good parent because that's not the way I was raised. Well, yeah, you can do nothing without him. Can I tell you that maybe that's the way your parents were. They could do nothing without them, and so you paid the penalty. It's about time you stopped that curse, wouldn't you think? You see this through the life of Esther. She can do some things, but in order to do what God was telling her to do, she had to express herself in believing in God, and so she asked people to pray for her. Look at Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Look what Jesus says. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. That's what prayer is, by the way. Prayer is seeking the kingdom. It always surprises me when I ask couples or people that I counsel or people that I meet and stuff like, well, have you prayed about it together? No. No, I get kind of weird. I feel weird. I feel weird when I pray together. Prayer is seeking the kingdom, and that leads to what fear does. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, Ben used this, but of power and of love and a sound mind. Soundness of mind. Is your mind racing? Better start praying, because God has not given us the spirit of fear. Look at that again. Fear is how we express ourselves, and so how can we react? Going to God. He's the fear buster. <laughs> Boom, baby, that'll preach. How are you expressing yourself? Oh, but you see, if I don't do this thing with my boyfriend or girlfriend, they're going to. No, 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 pastor. You see, if I don't give, if I give to the church, I won't be able to. Well, that's great, but seek first. Seek first in, that, in how you're reacting. Just seek first the kingdom, and all that will be added to you. Not my, it will. You see, most of you have not seen God move because you're still reacting on you and not on God, who gives us the power when you need it. Esther, if she were here right now, would tell you the same thing. Hey, I learned, lean on God. You see, good character is godly character. Character is expressed in the choices and the reactions that you make. And last point, and I love this point. This is the nuts and bolts point of today's message. Number three, learn to develop good godly character. Learn to develop. <laughs> Not practice, develop. This is such a great point. You see, the process or the development of good character, of godly character, must mean to start out that you didn't start out with good or godly character. Isn't that right? That's what it starts out. Of course, I'm right. You see, learning to develop good character is letting good character develop in you. Let me say that again. Learning to develop good character in your life is letting good character, godly character, develop in you. That is not an easy process. It is very difficult. Some of you think that just by being respectful and responsible, that's all you have to do. You haven't done a thing. You're just faking it. Let me see if this helps you understand. Look at Matthew chapter 16. I put 11. I'm so sorry about that. I want to thank Gonzo for catching that error. 1624. Is that right, Gonzo? Matthew 16, verse 24. Then Jesus said to his disciples... That's me and you. Disciples means followers of Christ, by the way. Said to his disciples, if any of you wants to be my follower, show of hands, anybody want to be a follower of Christ? Yeah. All right, that's most of us at least. Online too, send me an, a, 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 an emoji of, of a raised hand. 
If any of you wants to be my follower, you must. Everybody say must. You must give up your own way, take up your cross, and follow me. <laughs> oh, that sounds so pretty, huh? That sounds like something that you put over the kitchen table. And that's usually where it stays. I'm following Jesus. I'm building my cross right there. You see, this point can be plainly seen in the life of Esther. It, it wasn't until she started following the ways of the Lord when she started learning by praying and fasting, having people pray and fast for her. That is when you see her good character, her godly character develop. How do I know? You don't have to go there. Esther chapter 4, verse 16. If I die, I die. If I perish, I perish. She had committed herself to the cross. Think about that. That's not how Esther started. She kept who she was. Remember, she was a secret. See, some of you are secret Christians. Oh, come on. And now, boom. If I die, I die. See, as her character started to develop, godly character, you see her good character, godly character, start to grow and take strength. Like in Esther, chapter 7, verse 3 through 7, you don't have to go there. Before she kept her life a secret, now she's able to speak to the king, boom. In Esther chapter 8, she starts to ask for the Jews to be spared. Remember, she was being silent. And I think this is how we know that her and Mordecai continued in good and godly character. The very last part of Esther, chapter 10, verse 3, very last, it says that they continued to prosper and spoke peace to all their people. Shalom. Can you imagine that? First, she didn't want to tell anybody what she was and who she believed in. And now she was speaking to peace to all her people, the people of Persia even. That's amazing. Boy, oh boy, that'll breach. You see, are you still at the cross? See, let me say that again. Are you still kneeling at the cross or are you carrying and walking it? Or are you using the message of the cross how you allowed the cross to work in your life so that you can spread the goodness of the cross to others. Or are you still there at the cross? You got to move with it. You see, let me break this down, break this down. Someone asked me to break it down again. Thank you. Ladies, in your character, are you allowing the cross to lead you or are you still crucifying things at the cross? Are you letting the cross lead you or are you still crucifying things at the cross? Oh, Lord, I can't believe I did that again last night. Why did I let them do that again to me? Why? Oh, Lord, I'm so sorry. Are you letting the cross lead you? How do you know what you're doing? Hmm, well, you're dating. Are you using the message of the cross to guide you and them to the cross? Or are you broken in your dating at the cross? How long are you going to still feel shame at looking at the cross? <laughs> Pick up your cross. Walk. You see, the cross is where we follow Christ. Are you letting the message of the cross direct your spending and giving? Or are you still taking your money to the cross? Oh, Lord. I, I can't give right now because I bought this or I did that. Oh, Lord, I'm so sorry. I hope the pastor doesn't make jokes about the tithing again. <laughs> Men, are you letting the cross direct you in how you behave? Or in how you behave, are you still nailing things at the cross? Like, Lord, I know they're your creation, but there's so many and they're so pretty. I mean, folks... How many nails do you need? How many nails do you need? It just took three, and you're still nailing things to the cross. I mean, folks, how many nails do we need? You see, to go back to a sermon or two, are you the one that always has to be right, even in the bad choices you make? Mm -hmm. Or are you letting the cross live in other people's lives, or are you still thinking you're the Holy Spirit? Learn. Learn to develop good and godly behavior. 
And Jesus says, the way you do that is pick up the cross, follow me. <laughs> Let me wrap this up. Who <laughs> we? The follow me blows away right here in this section. Right there in that Bible verse, the follow me. Just find follow me there in that scripture. That blows me away. The other stuff really wasn't the point. The pick up your cross, but the point Jesus is making is follow me with your cross. You see, getting back to the book of Esther, Esther was about her. But as her character developed, she went from what's in it for me to what's in it for God. For Esther, follow me meant going to hostile people that were against her. It meant going uh, to people that were hostile to her people, but Esther went. Esther went. You see, follow me, for me and you, is following Christ in our sexuality, (laughs) in our relationships, in our finances, in our evangelism, in in our hopes and our dreams. When Jesus says, follow me, it means many times for you and me going with a cross. Ladies, are you going to the cross or at the cross are you learning where the Lord is saying, follow me, follow me. Men, are you going to the cross or at the cross are you learning where follow me is? Because Jesus says, come on, come on, you don't have to do that anymore. And here's the thing, the message for some of you might be a wake up call, but can I tell you something? Christ today would tell you, remain in me and I'll give you rest. Lean on me and I will help you. Lean on me and I'll give you strength. Lean on me and I will tell you where and how to follow. You know what that is? It's the message of communion, coming together. Communion. And as we get ready for communion, I just want to make some some points here about our communion here at Mesa Place. You know, we believe that that we want you to have a strong understanding of communion. And so as you come up this morning, I think we only have a couple guests, but so you understand there's, there's going to be bread, which is a symbol of life, and we have small cups of juice or water. If you've not been baptized yet as an adult, I would just challenge you, well, take, take some water and then come to talk to me about maybe getting you baptized and following Christ as a committed follower of Christ. The juice is for those of you who have been baptized. Now listen, we're not doing this to make you feel bad or anything like that. We're doing this because we want to teach our kids. And many times we are the ones that are still trying to understand and develop godly character. And so as we do, as we're teaching, you'll learn that the first thing you do is you commit your life to Christ. And then you just start obeying Him. After that, there's two specific things that Jesus tells us once we become believers. Communion and baptism, ordinances. The only thing he tells us to do. Neither one of these can save you, only our hope in Christ can, but it shows our obedience. Our obedience. So maybe like me, you were baptized as a baby, not as beautiful as I was, but nonetheless. But as as an adult, you've never made that decision and go like, oh yeah. They did that when I was a baby to care for me but now I get to make that decision. So if you've never been baptized or if you want to get baptized, please come speak to me or, or send me a, a, an email at connect at mesaplacechurch.com or just call me and we'll get together and we'll talk about your baptism. Now as we do, I'm going to get you all ready to take communion. So we're going to do this in the safest way we know how. So uh, you guys go first and get your... Your elements, go ahead, Jay, help. And then we'll dismiss you. Just please look for Robert, and he'll tell you when to go. And we're going to go in groups and families. Amen.
always get so emotional during communion. Because I think sometimes we think, or at least for me, Jesus is just somewhere else. Like he doesn't look at me all the time. He's not with me all the time. And I know I'm a pastor, but that's usually how we think about it. And it's in moments like this, specifically in this message on character, in how we are reacting. How do we react? Are we reacting where we forget that Jesus is asking us to come together? Are we forgetting that he loves us so much that all we have to do is just lean on him, just abide in him? Are we that weak and fragile that we forget that he loves us? Is that how we're reacting? You know, during the Facebook Live, I, I, I said very many of us are very scared and and, 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 and so sometimes our fear, yeah, it should guide us and protect us, absolutely. But is that all we're doing now? Seeing how many people died today and how many people got COVID. and Seeing ways how we can protest against our law enforcement. Has that, is that the way we're reacting? Matthew chapter 6, verse 26. While they were eating, Jesus took the bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it to his disciples, saying, take and eat this. This is my body. Do so now in remembrance of him. And he, Jesus, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, look at how he reacts. In thankfulness that he was going to be broken for you. He gave it to them, which is you and me. He says, drink from it, all of you. This is the blood of my covenant. It's going to be poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Don't keep nailing it at the cross. Follow Christ. Follow Christ. Leave it at the cross. Do so now in remembrance. You know, the book of Esther, it's such a beautiful book. But I think if you read it, you would miss some things, and that is the development of character. And so I just want to challenge you right now and, and online at home or listening on our podcast. But those of you here, I, I just want you to just close your eyes. I don't even want to bow, bow your heads. Just close your eyes. And I, I did this as I was preparing the message and, and it broke me. Could you just allow the Holy Spirit just to take you here? And that is, how did you react this week? Did you lose your temper again? Did you discourage somebody? In the way you thought about somebody, did, did you discourage yourself about them in your mind? In how you reacted in your dating? And for me, in how we joke with people? How are we reacting? Just allow, just allow the Holy Spirit just to work that. I know we took communion, and, but I just really feel that we need to take some time at home. Just how did we react? Well, they didn't put their clothes away in the hamper again, and here I am having to teach them all over again.
you kids, you teens. Mom and dad, they're so evil, they're so mean. Ugh. Husbands, wives, how did you react? And yeah, maybe you're, you're about to lose your job and stuff, but how are you reacting? In fear? Seek first the kingdom. That's pray, and then ask people to pray with you. That's how we should react. I just pray that you would take time right now. Maybe you need to do this with some counseling. Ben and I are here, Lori and Selena, Robert. Maybe just talk to somebody about how you're reacting. Who are you when you are alone? That's your character. The Christian walk is quite simply this, learning more about Jesus and then being Jesus as much as we can. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. Not you. He'll develop you to be all that you were meant to be. He's here to give you a better life. But how are you reacting? So very quickly, the message spoke to you. If, if God is just dealing with your heart, if that's you, if you would just raise your hand and say, yeah, that was me. I need to confess that. Go ahead. And, yeah, I see you. I see you. I'm not going to ask you to bow your heads or close your eyes. I think all of us, all of us can be there. And what, what happens is that many times, because of our bad character, that's the gateway, that's the door that Satan walks in. I mean, it's not just in the movies and the rock music and stuff like that where Satan comes in. He walks in in our character. And so don't let Satan defeat you. Instead, just start walking in Christ, searching for that good character that is only found in the vine. And so, Lord, I just pray right now for those, of, for those people that raised their hand with me and said, yeah, I, this week I messed up. This year, this month, I messed up. My character is my downfall. But Holy Spirit, help us to put on Christ. Help us to put on Christ. We want to walk in newness of life. For those of us that deal with fear and anxiety, in the name of Jesus, I pray that our reaction would be to call out to our Savior and not to our fear, our anxiety, and our doubt. For those of us that walk with, with lust and with anger and fear, and, and just destruction, I pray that we would, in the name of Jesus, that we would just put on Christ. Help our character be found in you, Lord. Help our character be found in you. It's in the name of Jesus that we pray and all God's people say, amen and amen. Hey, thanks for checking in today online. And if you need some help, like I said, you can... Send us an email at connect at mesaplacechurch.com if you need some help. We'll be here afterwards to pray for you. Uh, if you need to leave like, uh, like you can, go ahead and exit the uh, rear of the building. But uh, may God bless you and be with you. Hope to see you next week and online as well. God bless you all. Have a great week. Amen and amen.